This is Michael Popak, Legal AF, Mike Lindell, the pillow guy and the self-professed crack and coke addict who's a major election denier and to his own testament has spent 30 to $40 million claiming that Joe Biden did not win uh, legitimately the election in 2020, has to pay $5 million because he's lost. He lost the Prove Mike Wrong contest because somebody proved Mike wrong in terms of whether the data that he provided at a cyber symposium, uh, really a pillow sales conference masquerading as a cyber symposium, and where he invited self-selected forensic software people to evaluate data that Mike Lindell claimed was taken from the internet, follow this train of thought, everybody, that that was from, from the 2020 election, and all the people had to do to win the $5 million was not disprove his working theory that the Chinese interfered with the election. All they had to do to win, based on the rules that Mike Lindell set up, was disprove, to prove false, that the data set that they were given at the conference did not come from election data in 2020, that it was not legitimate, authentic election data. That's all they had to do. They didn't have to s- disprove the Chinese interference model or prove that it that it, the, 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 the election was legitimate. All they had to prove was that the data selected by Mike Lindell provided to them at the cyber symposium did not come from actual election data in 2020. Got it? That's the contest. And that's all they had to do. Now, of course, Lindell built in a whole bunch of rules to give himself an unfair advantage and put his thumb on the scale in his favor. Like, if there's any ambiguity, he's got the sole right to interpret it in his favor and things like that. But this was a contract. There was an offer, the contest offer, to prove Mike wrong. There were the parameters and the rules related to it, which was take the data set you're given and disprove that it came from actual election data. Not that it's related to the election, not that it had mentioned the election, not that it mentioned China, but that it was real election data. And if you disprove that, you get $5 million. And if you don't like the result, Lindell built into the rules that there be binding arbitration in front of the American Arbitration Association, the AAA, to decide the issue once and for all. Well, a computer scientist, Robert Zeidman, 45 years of experience in software and hardware expertise, went to the cyber symposium and was given 11 files by Mike Lindell and his team. He had a red team that was supposedly other cybersecurity experts who had looked at the data and confirmed that this internet data, this internet capture data, was what's called in the business packet data, PD, which could be evaluated by other forensic and computer scientists to determine once and for all whether it came from real election data or not. So it had to be packet data because that's what comes from this process of of real election data. And the internet is comprised of packet data, so it should be easy. And then then go from there in terms of the contest. So a panel of judges, all working under Mike Lindell, um, took a look at Mr. Zeidman's 15-page report in which he analyzed the 11 files and said definitively, there is no way on God's green earth, and I'm paraphrasing, that this data is packet data, nor that it, it is actual, authentic election data. No way, no how. And he went through in his 15-page report each of the 11 files and said, why? Okay, this one's just photographs. That's not packet data. This one is just random um, internet addresses. That's not packet data. And and so on and so on. And the panel, of course, they all panel of judges, they all work for Mike Lindell, they, they rejected this. Now it's before the AAA. This guy, Mr. Zeidman from Las Vegas, files it in Minnesota in Mike Lindell's home, home court, right? Home territory. And it's three judge panels, so three arbitrators, former judges and lawyers 
Take a look at the evidence. And everybody testifies. Mike Lindell testified in the arbitration. So don't let the reporting on this fool you. This is not like a default judgment. Lindell didn't participate. And, you know, Zeidman got some sort of victory. Lindell testified. Computer scientists working with Lindell testified. They put on their case with their lawyers. Mr. Zeidman put on his case with his lawyers. And the, and the arbitration panel made a conclusion. They went through each of the 11 and they said that the rules are simple. Did Mr. Zeidman prove uh, that the um, data that he was provided, the 11 um, files of data, did he disprove that they came from actual election data for 2020? And they went through each of the items and they said, first of all, none of these 11 are packet data. They have to be packet data in order for it to be uh, actual election data. And they rejected the panel, the arbitration panel, rejected Mike Lindell's argument that, well, I never said that it has to actual be, actually be election data. <clears throat> it's okay if it's um, related to the election or it, it mentions the election or it's um, during the election. And the panel said, that's not reasonable. That's not a reasonable interpretation of plain words on a page for this contest. The only reasonable interpretation is that you were looking for somebody to win the money if they could disprove, disprove that this data you gave them was authentically from election data, actual election data. And he did that. And so he should win the contest. And uh, Mike Lindell, now that they've got a $5 million award, the next step is Mr. Zeidman takes that award from an arbitration panel and he goes across the street and he files it in a courthouse and he moves to have it um, confirmed and recognized as an arbitration award and converted into a judgment. This is Michael Popak, Legal AF. Cold turkey may be great on sandwiches, but there's a better way to break your bad habits. We're not talking about some weird mind voodoo from your wacky neighbor or some sketchy message board. We're talking about our sponsor, Fume. And they look at the problem in a different way. Not everything in a bad habit is wrong. So instead of a drastic, uncomfortable change, why not just remove the bad from your habit? Fume is an innovative, award-nominated device that does just that. Instead of electronics, fume is completely natural. Instead of vapor, fume uses flavored air. And instead of harmful chemicals, fume uses all natural, delicious flavors. You get it. Instead of bad, fume is good. It's a habit you're free to enjoy and makes replacing your bad habit easy. Your fume comes with an adjustable airflow dial and is designed with movable parts and magnets for fidgeting, giving your fingers a lot to do, which helps with de-stressing and managing anxiety while breaking your habit. The first time I used Fume, I was shocked at how flavorful and fresh it tasted. It's easy to hold and perfectly balanced. Quite honestly, extremely fun to fidget with. The real wood material and sleek design definitely classes it up, and I feel pretty darn cool holding it. Stopping is something we all put off, because it's hard. But switching to Fume is easy, enjoyable, and even fun. Fume has served over 100,000 customers and has thousands of success stories, and there's no reason that can't be you. Join Fume in accelerating humanity's breakup from destructive habits by picking up the journey pack today. Head to tryfume.com and use code LEGALAF to save 10% off when you get the journey pack today. That's T-R-Y-F-U-M.com. Use code LEGALAF to save 10% off the journey pack today. So he'll, he'll likely go to a Minnesota court. He'll file an action to confirm the arbitral award for $5 million, turn it into a Minnesota $5 million money judgment, which then he can collect against the assets of not Mike Lindell particularly, but he set up a management company called Lindell Management LLC. Hopefully that has assets. Um, if it doesn't have assets, when they go to the time of collection, what they can, what uh, Mr. Zeidman and his lawyers can do is sit Mike Lindell down for a deposition and find out where all the assets are of the LLC as they try to execute on the judgment in bank accounts, physical assets, cars, equipment, you know, uh, intangible assets, intellectual property, whatever they own, inventory. Now, if that thing doesn't own a thing because it's a shell corporation, 
Then they can try to argue that it is an alter ego of Mike Lindell, and they can try to pierce through the corporation and get to Mike Lindell's personal assets. We're not there yet. First step is move to Minnesota Minnesota State Court, have it be recognized as a, as a judgment. And then Mike Lindell has the ability, as he has claimed that he will do, to move to vacate the arbitration award. Now, it's very hard to vacate an arbitration award. I've tried it myself about I would say five times in 30 years, I've done it once because the arbitrator and the arbit- and the arbitral panel are given tremendous power because the parties have agreed by consent to go into arbitration and give up their rights in a courthouse. So if they're going to do that, they make them stay there. And unless the arbitration panel has made manifest errors of law, you know, not even a fact, like of law, it's very hard to get a arbitration award vacated. So Lindell can talk it all up all he wants, but he's going to be paying this $5 million or they're going to go around to bank accounts with Lindell Management LLC's name on it and cars and boats and inventory and whatever to collect their $5 million using the sheriff's office. That's how that works. And this is not the only problem Mike Lindell has. We've talked a lot on the Midas Touch Network about the $787.5 million judgment or settlement that Dominion voting systems entered into with Fox News and Fox Corporation and a bunch of other Fox people down in Delaware. But there is a little covered case that's getting a lot more attention in which Dominion has also sued Mike Lindell for $1.6 billion in the District of Columbia Circuit Court And in that case, in which they're seeking those damages, um, they are claiming that Mike Lindell continues to defame them with actual malice, knowing that what he's saying is false or that he shouldn't know that it's false, claiming again that they're using Venezuelan corrupted software supplied by Smartmatic to flip votes from Donald Trump to Joe Biden and all the rest of the conspiracy theory that was just presented to the Delaware judge before settlement in which he ruled that it was crystal clear, judge's words, that everything being said by Dominion, by Fox, and the people like Sidney Powell and Giuliani on Fox was demonstrably false. Same thing. This is the same fate that Lindell is going to suffer, except he's not in Delaware. He's in the District of Columbia in front of Judge Carl Nichols, also the judge presiding over the the uh, Steve Bannon case, just to put some connections here. And when the district court judge Nichols in the fall refused to dismiss the case on Mike Lindell's motion and found that it, it was properly pled, allegations in the complaint were proper to support a claim for defamation and an ultimate jury finding of actual malice, meaning the case now continues through discovery and document exchange and depositions. Lindell ran to the U.S. Supreme Court to try to get an emergency relief. And the U.S. Supreme Court, after chuckling a bit, I'm sure, denied the relief, sent it back to Judge Nichols. And now that case is just moving along in a normal path, probably six months to a year away from depositions. Um, And then a trial will be set. And Mike Lindell is either going to settle that case for a big sum of money and a lot of pillows, or they're going to win that case based on what we saw in the evidence presented against Fox News, which is an overlapping set of evidence that would be used against Mike Lindell. Except you take Mike Lindell's statements and comments um, and you put them up on the board instead of Fox, but but and they'll get all the internal emails from him. And we know that the statements are a lie. And the only question is going to be whether Mike Lindell said these things and continues to say these things against Dominion with actual malice. But the reporting today is that Mike Lindell has lost the prove Mike wrong contest because somebody proved Mike wrong. They proved that the data from the Cyber Security Conference in North Dakota was not uh, election data from the 2020 election at all. It was a bunch of jumbled mess supplied to them 
They just were hoping that nobody would collect on the $5 million. And now there's an arbitration award, soon to be a Minnesota judgment against Mike Lindell for $5 million or one of his companies that uh, Mr. Zeidman, the computer scientist, will be able to ultimately collect on. We bring these stories to your attention. Um, yes, they're odd. Yes, they're weird. But when you have a major election denier out there who's spending 40 or $50 million of his own money to try to tear down the um, our democracy and the sanctity of our election process, we're going to call it out. In fact, Mr. Zeidman, just as a side note, a little PS, is not a Democrat. He's not a liberal. He's a twice voted for Donald Trump. He considers himself a Republican. And the only he also thinks there was some fraud in the election, doesn't know whether there was enough to overturn the election, but wanted to take down Mike Lindell because he thinks attacks on our democracy and attacks on our election system that are baseless um, are terrible, terrible for the, our system of government and our way of life. That's why he is a patriot, even though he voted for Donald Trump, even participated in the contest and then sued successfully to obtain the money from Mike Lindell and his Lindell Management LLC. I do hot takes like this one about every day at the intersection of law and politics for politically charged litigation matters. I'm a practicing lawyer, but doing it for 32 years, tried dozens and dozens of cases successfully. And I bring my analysis to you on this forum on the Midas Touch Network. I also co-anchor a podcast at the intersection of law and politics, where we curate hot takes just like this one. I do it with Karen Friedman Ignifolo on Wednesdays. I do it with Ben Micellis on Saturdays. And if you like what I'm doing, you can follow me on all things social media at MS Popuck. This is Michael Popuck, Legal AF reporting. Midas Touch is unapologetically pro-democracy. And look, we know you are too. So please make sure you check out our best-selling shirt and our best-selling gear, the unapologetically pro-democracy gear. And hey, while you're at it, make sure you check out my favorite shirt and one of our most famous designs. It wasn't rigged, you're just a loser. At store.midastouch.com. That's store.midastouch.com.